keeping us on task and on schedule, and uh, they're going to keep us under budget too, right, guys? Okay. <laughs> and, and, and like I say, it's just been it's just been great. So, who do I have next on the program? <laughs> Mr. Youngquist, having our design team. I'd like to say a few words, here, Paul. Okay. Um, it's a balmy day here. I've, uh, I remember when I was snowmobiling from Tower, Minnesota to uh, the North Shore, it was minus 47, so that was kind of a cool day. But um, good thing the sun is out. Um, I've been designing schools for about 28 years, and uh, before that I did a variety of uh, types of buildings, and one of them was um, computerized uh, automated uh, warehouses or distribution centers like Target and those were neat buildings because you had to make them just the right size so that all the boxes would fit in the building. But my point is that uh, none of that is anywhere near as neat as it is to get to design a place where uh, teachers work with uh, young learners and you create the kind of environments that uh, they need to have. Uh, years ago, we used to designing a um, the school meant you just put a big long corridor and you put uh, a bunch of classrooms on each side of the corridor, but that's not the way it is anymore. Um, kids, uh, I think we're just trying to maximize uh, the opportunity for kids to learn, and doing that means that you give uh, different environments, you give different settings. Um, kids learn at different rates, they di learn in different ways, so there'll be times where uh, in this building teachers will be given direct instruction, there'll be times where they um, will be learning on their own independently or with other kids, there'll be times where they're sitting at tables and teachers will come around and act as kind of a coach. So designing schools nowadays is a lot more fun and a lot more rewarding uh, than just creating a lot of uh, square rooms where you push uh, 